I, you know, you can trust your body. You know, you do want to survive, you know, because you can get into a place where you're like, actually, maybe I just want to give up. But actually, it's like, no, you do want to survive. And you're, it's fine. You're going to have hard times, but you're going to, you're going to make it. You'll be okay. So my name is Fumi Adebayo. Um, I call myself Nigerian. I'm British Nigerian, born in Britain, but of Nigerian descent. Um, and I used to be a trader, um, but I also write as well. So um, I write as an opinion opinion columnist for the Africa Report, um, and also just generally just blogging. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, and this. <laughs> I'm not actually blogging while I ride um, because I didn't want to put too much pressure on me to do it for performative purposes. I wanted it was very it was a very personal decision, you know, in terms of intention. Um, but as I've spoken to more and more people, and the fact that there aren't many uh, black women um, who have taught, I felt okay. I'm learning so much. I should write about it. Um, not I should, I want to, you know, I want to share that knowledge. Um, so I, I'm looking to do that. I just need to figure out a way to actually do it. But I've been detailing the story on my Instagram. So I started my journey in Toronto. I flew in, into Toronto. Um, and I, I really didn't come very, very prepared. I, I just decided that I wanted to actually, I wanted to prove to myself that I could do something that scares me, um, do something I've always wanted to do, even though I had this recent diagnosis of complex PTSD, um, which had debilitated me quite a lot because I had, um, you know, a more traumatic event last year um, and I could talk two weeks, I couldn't sleep, um, you know, and I was constantly being triggered and it's been really intense for me. So I wanted, I just felt out of control of myself. And I wanted, so I made a split decision and I was like, I've always wanted to do this, I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna overthink it, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna live in the moment instead of, because with an anxiety disorder, you're either always living in the future, or always living in the past. And I found that when I was trading, cycling, something that really helped me deal with my anxiety so I would cycle 10 miles to work back and it really helped me and there was something you know there was mindfulness about it like you know you're just focusing on pedaling you're working your left and right side of your brain and so you process a lot in a healthy constructive way um, and I just thought you know what I'm just gonna do it so put the flight one way to Toronto and I just decided, okay, I got there. <laughs> and I was like, what, what, what do I want to do? <laughs> and I looked at those are different routes. And then I just thought, do you know what? I don't want to do one of these routes. I, I just want to do it myself. It's like, I had a cousin who was at Harvard University who I hadn't seen in like 15 years. And I was like, she's in Boston. And, I was, and then it was like, okay, my first stop will be Boston. So I'll go from Toronto to Boston. And I bought my bike on the second day within five hours it was stolen um which was insane but what was great about it is that it happened on the on so soon so in the beginning it allowed me to know that i can't travel with a bike that looks like that because it's at risk of getting stolen and i'm by myself so it made me comfortable the fact that i'm by myself it's not like someone else can watch my bike for me if i need to lock it up um and also, I found out that my travel insurance and home insurance covers me abroad. So they were able to pay out on that. I was able to get a cheaper bike, a Trek bike, which I didn't know Black Girls and Bike was associated with at the time. Um, and yeah, just I just decided I'm not going to give up. But I spent one week just in my feelings. like. Uh, but I said, no, I'm still going to do it. Um, and I started. And that's how I started going to Boston. And then I decided 
um, you know, I wanted to go to New York City and my mum will meet me out there and I'll do the next leg to DC in her name because she had breast cancer. She went to chemo, radio and the charity Macmillan um, really helped and supported her through that time. And so I'll devote that leg to her. Um, and the first leg was to devote to me conquering, you know, my my uh, trauma. You know, I wanted to feel like I've overcome it. Like once I, if I can get to Boston, then it's done, you know, I can let that go. And so, and then it was just like, okay, let's see, maybe I can go all the way to the bottom. <laughs> so then it was like Miami, Florida. Um, but now, you know, money-wise and things like that, I decided to finish at Atlanta, which I know is also known as the Black Mecca. And I was like, it works, you know, it's fitting. Um, so that's, that's how I came to, you know, what route I'm gonna do. <laughs> so it wasn't as planned as other people. Um, so I'm here in Philly as one of my stops on the way to DC um, from New York City. Um, and it just so happens that, um, you know, a moniker for a black girl to bike was here um, for the expo. And also I messaged in another um, Facebook group and another guy was biking from New York City to Philly. So he was like, I was able to rendezvous with him in East Windsor and he was the one who told me about the equity and biking event that was yesterday. So I ended up just going with him and biking to that event. Um, and that's when I met other people and you know got the front rack and all these things. So um, yeah, that's basically why I'm here. So it's really just to explore Philly. Also as a stop, so I'm resting here because I've gone two days, long days. It was 65 miles and then it was another 50 miles. Um, and I wanted to rest my legs, but also experience Philly. Philly's got a lot of history to it as well, um, before I continue on my journey. No, 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 no. I've been to the US before for sure. It's my first time cycling in the US at all, actually. You okay? Um, I haven't even cycled casually. I'm But yeah, no, it's... I studied abroad at um, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign um, for a term and I fell in love with Chicago as well. So I always kind of had this, you know, because that was another point in my life where I really got to learn myself. Honey, you'll so be I always doing had this thing about the states, like there's something I hear. So when I feel down, I tend to come here to escape actually. Um, and so, yeah, it's just been, it's been good. I, I definitely have felt the physical benefits of it. I'm much fitter. Um, I was smoking to manage my anxiety and I haven't been smoking on this trip. I've had moments where, like when I got the news, where I smoked, but I've not needed to because it's been managing, helping me manage my anxiety. Um, and, okay. you know, I breathe better, I breathe easier. Um, the only thing is when you have complex PTSD, you really struggle with sleep. This sort of um, strain in terms of activity um, puts you in an adrenalized state, so it can it can it can actually compound your sleep problems. So I, I would have times where I've done a seven-hour day and I'll get to and I'm not tired. I'm just like, but like I'm still here, you know. So and I just wouldn't be able to sleep. So I had to I had to just take time to take a break. It's okay to take a break, like. You know, I had to tell myself, who am I competing with? <laughs> like, you know, I can take a break. However long I need to take a break, take a break. You know, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, I'd say there's definitely been health benefits. I don't have abs yet. Um, but uh, my quads are stronger. Uh, so, yeah, in, in terms of muscle build, that's all that's happened so far. The biggest challenge I faced is actually on the very first, well, the second day um, when I got to Niagara Falls, um, which I really, really wanted to go and see. Like, I found out that um, one of my sister's friends had committed suicide and she had PTSD as well. 
and it really 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 knocks me you know because I saw the parallels and it just triggered me a lot um, and so I would say that that actually was sad for me because you know I, I always had a feeling that oh good thing really good things happen and then bad things happen that don't allow me to really enjoy the moment and so I was in front of Niagara Falls crying you know I didn't really get a chance to feel like oh this is amazing like, I got here you know um, but then that's why Black Girls Do Bike is so special to me actually because when I got to Buffalo NY I was really really down and I felt so lonely and I just wanted to be around people and I just messaged into the chat and you know she called me just straight away and she said where are you what do you need do you even offer to pay for a night and she just said just come here and like you know had other people with her um, and just put me on her wing and set up the chat um, and you know set me up with all these chapter heads and people to speak to and it just felt like I had a community that really took me in at one of my lowest points and sort of been carrying me through, you know, and she's been checking in on me, put me in touch with Anika, um, you know, who's based in Syracuse. Um, she took me into her home, met her sons, um, video called her daughter, <laughs> like, you know, and she really took me and reminded me of my mom so much and it just felt, you know, like I was taken into the bottom of black women, you know, like no for real like and and it just really felt that way <laughs> um and i think yeah but i would say that has been that was probably my lowest point actually not even the bike getting stolen i mean that that didn't hurt but that's something you know i could deal with this is like bittersweet so i had a moment where and you know, I had a one of the one of the times that has been rewarding for me was also one of my hardest times. So um, my bike, it was raining very bad. I got caught in really bad rain, and I wasn't able to charge my phone. And so I had like only 10% um, and I had 20 miles to go. And I just thought I need to just write this down. I just need to write down the route my phone is definitely gonna die. I wasn't able to go back and um, I had to keep going forward. There were no motels that were close that I could route to. Um, and all I had was literally my Fitbit. <laughs> um, and I, by that point, I kind of got the sense every one mile I do around five minutes. It takes five minutes to do it. So, you know, I'm gonna be on this road for this many miles or what have you. It got really dark, it got really cold and I was going, 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 I realised, you know, I've been on this incline for a while, it was getting steeper and steeper, colder and colder. And then in the end I just had to walk through the rain and the cold for like two hours in the dark, no phone, nothing, and I was terrified. And then what was scary was the decline because it was so steep. And then I got to the bottom and there was a phone shot and I was just like, this is a miracle. <laughs> I got, yeah, no, literally, and it was like lit up. And I got there and I just couldn't, I like everything seized up because I was so cold. I was literally working on adrenaline and they just took me, <laughs> they're like, sit down. And I was like, I can't sit. And they were like, just stand there, get your coffee. They sorted out my phone and a guy was there and he had a pickup truck and he was like, I will drive you to your hotel from here. Um, and, it turned out I had hiked a mountain. So they were like, you went, like, you went up a mountain, like that's crazy, like even driving there is crazy, you know? And they were like, there's bears there, there's all sorts of things, like, you know, and they were showing me like, all the different animals that are there. And I was just like, that is insane. But it taught me, you know, it was really a moment for me where I was just like, I, you know, you can trust your body. You know, you do want to survive, you know? Because you can get into a place where you're like, actually, maybe I just want to give up. But actually, it's like, no, you do want to survive. But you'll, it's fine, you're going to have hard times, but you're going you're gonna to make it, you'll be okay, you know? Um, and I think 
that's what's really been rewarding throughout the whole trip is just the sense that every day I don't know where I'm going I've never been there before every day I don't know each turn I don't know what's around the turn I don't know um, but every day I make it I'm like I made it you know like it's okay you don't need to be so worried and that people are very kind people have been so helpful as well overwhelming I mean, traveling while black, I have to say that, you know, I have to say as a black woman, really, because um, I think it, it is a specific sort of experience. And, and I have to say as a black femme, really. Um, but, you know, I do um, identify as non-binary, but I recognize that I'm socialized as, you know, my social experience as a black woman. Um, and. You know, I would say it's just, there's a premium to it. There's an extra price to it, you know. And I can't, or at least I don't feel safe while camping. You know, I don't feel safe just staying in a park or knocking on people's stores. You know, particularly, you know, I was going through upstate New York. It was like, voting, Trump, 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 Trump everywhere, you know. And people are nice, but that doesn't mean people are ready to invite you into their home, you know. Um, and so that has meant that I have had to rely on, a pro, you know, accommodation, from accommodation, and then also I have to be careful of being safe. So I don't want to cycle that night, you know, as it were. Um, you know, um, it's just something that I'm constantly, it's like you're constantly moving through life, um, you know, on defense. You know, you have to think, you have to look ahead and think, what possible risks could I face and you have to plan for that. That also costs some money. Um, so I would say that, that um, thankfully what's been powerful about this is that, you know, I'm learning as I'm learning. It's knowledge I can give to other black women to learn because I think another problem is our lack of knowledge in this space because there aren't many black people who talk, period, whether they're women or however they, ident they identify, you know. Um, so it's, it's, I would say that that's something, um, you know, it, information, you, it was hard to get that information. Um, warm showers is an organization everyone said I should use. No one has responded to me, they've just ignored me on there. Um, you know, so it, it's, you, you face these things, you know. And I think I also recognize the privilege I have in having a very British accent. So at first people be quite aggressive in their body language and the way when they see me. And then when I talk, it's like, oh, you're, you're not from here. And suddenly, you know, they, and I can just imagine what the experience would be like as an African American, because they're gonna look at you a certain way, think of you in a certain way, you know? And I'm also conscious of the fact that you know, I'm in the cycling gear or what have you. So um, when I'm in the whole cycling gear, it's like people find that interesting. But when I'm just dressed in my hoodie and what have you, you know, I get treated completely differently. I've been ID'd so many times, like, which I find insane, you know, for alcohol, like I'll be at a restaurant and I'll see no one else is getting ID'd because they're obviously adults or they're obviously, you know. Or like I've had situations where they've asked me to pay immediately instead of after. And you're just kind of like, you know, why why is that happening? You know? And I think that is the experience you have as a black person. It's that you always have to be aware of, um, you know, how people are going to read your blackness. And it's very pervasive. Um, you know, I found a way to try and manage that and to not allow it to um, take over this trip. Um, but it's still something that I carry with me and it's, it, it is a mental health um, you know, aspect of the trip I have to manage at all. Um, so I would say that's really what, you know, what it's been like. Um, yeah, so um, to find me right now 
it's on Instagram. I've just been posting on my stories. I've not done proper posts, mainly because I'm not very good at social media management. Um, but you can find me on my Instagram handle. It's from Ade Richerian, so that's F U M A D E B R I T G E R I A M. Um, and yeah, you can find me on there. Um, I will. My media might be open, um, but I'll start that up, and I might start writing just about thoughts and feelings I've had along the way. Um, in terms of um, raising money, this trip from New York City to DC is devoted to breast cancer um, awareness and money for Black Women. That's a charity. Um, you can find me on Just Giving. Um, slash my name for me Adebayo so that's F-U-N-M-I A-D-E-B-A-Y-O um, and in terms of sending money my way I, I mean to help me along with this trip um, uh, DM me on Instagram I'll figure out I don't have um, a link for that right now um, but yeah DM me on Instagram and I really appreciate any help I can get, of course. Um, but really, I think the real values have been in meeting people. So I like that I've been able to meet other, particularly black women, um, black men as well, but black women mainly, um, you know, to the black femmes, I should say, who, you know, I've been able to get to know and I have. And if, for me, it's a safe space, you know? and it's a space that I enjoy and so it's been nice being able to stay with people like for example here I've stayed with Brooklyn here Brooklyn from Brooklyn um, who's been amazing um, and you know I'd love that so if people along my route because I'll be going from you know what's in DC I'll be going through Virginia North Carolina South Carolina then Atlanta Georgia um, you know anyone who's around on those you know I'd be happy to meet them, stay with them if they are happy, because that's really where the cost is in the population. Um, I hope it dispels this idea that you can't do long journeys like this. I think if more black women feel like they can do it, then there'll be more of us to do it, and it will make the trips easier as well because it's cheaper if you're doing it with other people, you know? That's another way this would have been cheaper if I had other people to do it with. And quicker, you know? Because you don't, when I've cycled with other people, I can go to other distances. Um, so, you know, if you're worried about time, you're worried about money, you know, it helps if there's crystal mass. I think that's important. Um, and also, you know, I'm hoping I can try and build or you know or maybe even uh, work with black girls who fight the UK to try and build you know this sort of initiative but I think it's really important that we have that international connection means of communication you know as a diaspora network um, and the only other thing is that you know I think a lot of people I feel sad or feel like they, they're not sure what they want to do, what direction they're going in. Um, you might not be able to do a long tour, but you know, you sometimes just a change of environment is good. And if you've got a bike or you're able to get a bike, just take a weekend trip away or something. Just look on a map like you know, somewhere it's 20, 30 miles away and cycle there. And you know, it might make you feel better because gymming me felt like work, you know. Um, this has been a way for me to be fitter and enjoy it. And I think the biking is good for 